As for our day tomorrow, I'm talking about accumulation we're expecting, plus the coldest temperatures of this winter season on the way too. Plus new developments tonight out of Monotom and a case of misuse of taxpayer money. And what you should know about the price of those flowers you're trying to send this Valentine's Day. Coverage you can count on. KOMU 8 News starts now. Well, you might enjoy your break from snow and winter weather, but this week brings it all back. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jordan Berger. And I'm Claire Bradshaw. Thanks for joining us. The City of Columbia is already preparing for snow. Plow crews are scheduled to report at 6 tomorrow morning. Let's send it over to Kenton for a look at what to expect. All right, Claire and Jordan, look at satellite and radar, and you can see the clouds are already here ahead of the system, so it's a cloudy night for us, but the moisture is still backing off. It's still over here in uh, Texas, getting into Arkansas and Oklahoma. We're waiting for that to move in a little bit later on. So if I track that for tomorrow morning, getting here between about 6 and 9 a.m., snow coming down. Then we're looking at some warmer temperatures south of Interstate 70, giving some rain for you folks, but snow for most of this system north of Interstate 70 will end it in the evening with snow for all of us, so all of us will get some accumulation out of this and then we're looking at some decreasing clouds and brutal temperatures as we head into the end of the week. We're on a storm on three for the system on our zero to five scale and that's because of the snowfall especially. I'll tell you how much snow we're expecting from this, what the road conditions are going to look like, everything in the first alert forecast coming up. All right, Kenton, thank you. Here's what's happening right now. Primary polls are starting to close in New Hampshire. All of them will be closed by 7 p.m. Democratic candidates spent the day of New Hampshire's first in the nation primary talking up their candidacies and taking aim at a rival who isn't even on the ballot there. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. All eyes are on the Granite State after last week's chaotic Iowa caucuses where problems with an app delayed the outcome for days. Results from New Hampshire will start to come in by 7 p.m. Also happening right now, Ashland Police Chief Lynn Wolford was placed on administrative leave. The press release from the city administrator came less than an hour ago. This is video from a previous interview we've done with him. City officials say they'll provide additional information and details once the matter is reviewed. While the police chief is on administrative leave, Ashland's city deputy chief will serve as the interim chief of police. Drug costs are rising, and State Senator David Satter says middlemen like pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs, are to blame. KMU 8's Skyler Webb is live at the Capitol after pharmaceutical representatives met with Sater today to discuss a bill that would rein in the role PBMs play in drug distribution and save you money. Right now, a prescription that you've been filling at your local pharmacy for years could suddenly rise in price should PBMs decide it's just no longer covered by your local health insurance. PBMs are in under the new bill would provide transparency to that middleman and it would add a little more accountability to their activity. PBMs are currently the only part of the supply chain that's not licensed by Missouri. Patients are often directed to mail order pharmacies and stripped of their choice of where they get their medication. Loretta Bozine is the mother of a sick child and learned what PBMs were after a mail order pharmacy shipped her son's liver transplant medication without notification. He then underwent transplant rejection. Yesterday I told my son that I would be here today. His reaction was one of excitement and appreciation. You know, he may not understand why a corporation would unnecessarily risk his life or why common sense legislation is so difficult to pass, but he understands that there's people fighting for him. Missouri is just one of many across the nation enacting this sort of legislation. Live at the Capitol, Skylar Webb, KMU 8 News. Skyler, thank you. If your commute takes you along Highway 22, you may want to find another route. That's because a bridge along the highway partially collapsed near Centralia. Centralia police released these pictures showing part of the bridge's deck is down to nothing but rebar. They also say the highway is down to just one lane east of Centralia. We'll have more coming up at 9 and 10. New developments, developments tonight in the case of the former Monotaw County assessor accused of misusing taxpayer money. Prosecutors now say her husband was involved in the scheme, and yesterday prosecutors filed charges against him. QMU 8's Daniel Perot has been looking into newly released court documents and joins us with more. Remember last month, prosecutors charged Amanda Trimble with forgery, stealing, falsifying documents, and then fraudulently using a credit card. She eventually resigned her post. While her husband Justin is not in as much trouble as she is, he is accused of using a county gas card to pay for his gas. When former Monotaw County Assessor Amanda Trimble is arraigned before a judge next month, she'll have company. For better or for worse, her husband Justin will be right there with her, accused of getting gas on the county's dime. 
On Friday, prosecutors charged him with two misdemeanors, fraudulent use of a credit card and stealing. According to court documents, Highway Patrol investigators found 123 suspicious fuel purchases. Surveillance video shows Justin using the card four times. Total price tag for taxpayers, $113. As for Amanda, she's responsible for 99 of those 123 trips to the gas station, often after hours and sometimes even multiple times per day. She resigned as county assessor in December after the sheriff's office launched an investigation into her following a whistleblower complaint. Investigators say she used county funds for several personal trips that did not involve county business. In October, she used a county card to buy two tickets for a flight to Dallas to attend training that investigators say never happened. Instead, she just wanted to celebrate her friend's birthday in Texas. She also falsified documents and invoices to get reimbursed for those trips. Total amount of taxpayer money spent on personal expenses, $4,800. She now faces charges of forgery, stealing, falsifying documents, and fraud. Both Justin and Amanda Trimble are scheduled to be arraigned on March 26. In the studio, Daniel Perro, KOMU 8 News. Thanks, Daniel. Coming up, we'll tell you what hundreds of Chiefs fans were lining up for overnight. Prices for flowers seem too good to be true. We'll tell you what you should know to avoid disappointment on Valentine's Day.